How you do? How you doing? How you do? How you doing? My name is Quetta. If you're new here, subscribe. Just subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna make a song about subscribers. Watch my videos, comment, like, and share. I talk to y'all about my day I had today. I know y'all probably getting sad of the same happy stories, but um, today I think I almost relapsed. Not off of alcohol, not off of drug. I had a doctor's appointment with my doctor today, and over the phone. And I had to do x-rays like a week ago. It's in my videos. And my back has bothered me real, real bad. So um, he's describing Percocet. And for y'all know I'm in recovery. No mood altering substance. And they say if you have to take pain medicine, talk to your doctor about it first. So my doctor told me, as long as I take it, like the bottle says, I should be okay. Go. But I'm an addict. I can't have one or nothing that makes me feel good or makes me feel the feelings that I don't want to feel. I was so close to taking a pill from my back. So for me, my disease is telling me, oh, it's just a pill is for your back. But I knew better. I've been taught when I was in treatment that the devil comes in every shape, form, and fashion. It didn't come in a beer. It didn't come in a, a shot. It came in a form of a pill. So I got scared because I knew <clears throat> to myself that that was a really risky thing to do. And that could have sent me back to alcohol because I can't. I won't have enough. One is too many, a thousand is never enough of anything that makes me feel numb. Uh, a release from the feelings I'm feeling. And that's why I drank for so long because the feelings of the things and choices I was making with my life. I want to cover them up and not cope with them. So even when I try to stop drinking on my own, it'll last two or three days and I'll go back to drinking because I hate to feel. I'm going out, there's a lot going on with me and my kids. But wait, that's what I did, y'all. Let me tell you about this woman. I was on my way to pick up the pills, right? And I stopped at the gas station. They say, if you tell on your disease, once it come out your mouth, it can't manifest. I call my mama, <laughs> Mama Kathy. And I knew once I told her, it was a problem shared that's in half. So I told her, and that was my way of, okay, getting rid of it, releasing it. Now the same time I told her, I hung up like, damn, I'm pissed, man, because I can't take the pill now. So don't get me wrong, I'm a strong person. I can't get to my meetings, I can't get to church, I can't network like I want to, and I'm proud of myself because just coming out of treatment newly sober, I would have been drunk by now if I didn't have the willingness and I didn't surrender to God to actually want to stay sober and have a normal life, whatever that is. Um, so I called my mom and I told her, she said, uh, don't even pick him up. I said, I'm going to get him and I'm going to bring him to you. So I jumped, I went and got him, jumped in my car, went over there to my mama's house and I handed her them pills. And it was lifted. But I carried this feeling for about an hour of like, damn, I wanted to take that pill. Like I was mad at my disease, I guess, because I can't just do normal shit that you would just normally do. I can't. But that lady right there is such a sweet, caring, calm person. She's very loving. She didn't give me no money or nothing. She gave me uh, love understanding she didn't judge me she said I'll be stupid because you know what that do to you because when you got your boobs done you took Percocets and this is my disease want to argue back with her well I know a lot more now I know how to take the pills now bitch no you don't the same pills that got you uh when I was sober before I didn't know about pills and what they can do but I know now but still it has set off a chemical imbalance in my brain and I'll be somewhere. I would be not probably even be talking to y'all right now. I'll probably be somewhere drunk with the people I used to be with and probably be dead by tomorrow morning. So praise God for my mother, man, and my dad. My dad said he was very proud of me. And um, 
this is after I went back after to go check on my mom during her video because she was so upset during her lab. I had to get on my car and go check on my mama. But my dad said if I was to pick back up anything, it would really mess them up. They don't know what they would do. And I don't want to hurt nobody like that. I caused enough hurt. But my mom's all silly and sweet at the same time. It's a good woman right there, man. It, it's a true blessing from God to have a mother who's there for you, who cares for you, through thick and thin, through your bullshit, through your mess, through your through your achievements, through your accomplishments, through the thoughts and dreams she had for you, the thoughts and dreams that she still have for you, the ones that we accomplished. She's there for us through every single thing. I'm 40. Don't mess with me because my mama coming. My mama cuts out. I guess I should cuss out God for me, but my mom then went to some battles for me, man. I remember when I was in Florida, my mom could find me. This lady called the FBI. I had the FBI looking for me. <laughs> my mom is an amazing person. She's going through some stuff right now, and I just wish that my mom would be able to just let God handle what's going on and how she's feeling. Pick and choose her battles and let God take it. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'm at a place where if somebody does something to me or they irritate me or I feel some other way, I'm able to let it go. Not let it go, but say, that ain't my mess. That's theirs. They gonna go through it. They gonna feel it. They gonna think about what they said. They gonna feel guilty all in without me saying anything. But, um, almost relapsed today i'm tired of feeling like i'm feeling without my kids every day it's a it's a, it's a, i'm i'm lifted by something a social worker tell me and then it's snatched away before i can even process it and enjoy it it's very stressful for somebody to like my mom is I, my mom never lost us and even though i'm a great mom and i want to be even better mom i'm not there for my kids right now right now and i know that's messing them up because everybody needs their mama so I thank God for my mom, but I have this social worker dictating when I can see my kids, my kids, my babies, talking about a visit that they snatch away and cancel. They snatch, they cancel dad visit for tomorrow because somebody said they're having symptoms of COVID-19. I knew the day before yesterday when we had talked to the people and the visits were still going to be going on at home because, like I said, it's the last step to us getting our kids back. But when they said, if anybody's having symptoms, let us know. We'll cancel the visit and come back the next week and revisit it. See, very like, okay. I knew somebody was going to pull that shit and say they were having symptoms. How were you not sick yesterday or day before yesterday, but all of a sudden, the day for the visit, you're sick? I knew it. But they said because my kids are in two different households, if the girls are sick, then the girls will stay. But if the son's not sick, then he could come, vice versa. Not even a day, two days of being happy for my visits. It's supposed to start next week at my mom's house. They just snatched away. Like, my heart can't take no more. My brain is tired. I probably subconsciously wanted to take that pill to just relax my brain for a minute. I'm tired. I'm stressed out. And my kids, I only can imagine how they feel because I'm grown. At least I know how to, you know, try to channel it, pray, read something. They just go through it. They probably play and kick it, but I know my kids is um, having a hard time right now. And I can't be there for them. I can't be there to hug them and tell them to be okay or go do something fun and change their mind. Can't kiss them and hug them can't just lay with them and smell them. My kids are very um, affectionate kids. They like to hang off with me and dad all day and follow us around the house like they see us for the first time. But I thank God that they are kids and they can pretty much be distracted quickly. <coughs> so I had to call, um, today I was just like my final straw. I called the federal courts and legal aid and I told them what was going on with my case and I think that my case is being neglected. It's not being handled appropriate. I need help. So a lawyer's supposed to call me tomorrow to discuss. See, the federal federal laws, the civil laws or whatever, is different. I have a, a, a legal, I forget what it is. My brain's tired, y'all. I was just crying, like, dude. I have a legal right to raise my kids. 
I believe legal right to see my kid. It's different from the federal. Once federal laws get into it, federal courts for a family and children's, it's a whole different story, a whole different ball game. Many of people told me about this before, but I didn't know. I just want to, oh, I do what I got to do. I'll get my kids back. But that's not the case with this stuff. It's, not, it's just not happening. And it's not happening fast enough, especially when the social worker put those bad papers out on the foster mother who has my girls and said that she refused our visit. She's trying to have my girls move from her house. My girl's been there for a whole year almost. That will be traumatizing. I'm trying to tell these people that were took from home, God blessed them with somewhere to go, that was healthy and safe for them, and now they're risking being snatched out of that home and put in somebody else's home, probably be split up and all that because the shit you did because you ain't cover your, trying to cover your ass because you didn't want to do what you had to do. So, and then I haven't seen my kids in almost two months. I've seen them on duo. They've been at dad's house, what, two or three times now? But if they keep stopping these visits, and the visits is what we need at home and overnight to get our kids back, how the fuck long is it going to be drawn out? We got a court August 12th. If that's just not a order, then what? We go back in 90 more days again? I need to start me a GoFund page to pay for a lawyer to get my kids home. Because I know they'll be home within a week and a half the right way. Because these people just like, they don't want to give me my kids back. They don't want to, all the progress, all the classes that we took. Talking to therapists. And I went through treatment because I really just wanted to go through treatment and get some help. But a big part of it was because of my kids. Not to just get them back to be a good mother to them forever. But I tell y'all, my head hurts so bad. I'm tired. I, I'm just overwhelmed. I feel lost. I feel like what else can I do? And I think about everything I can do and I do it. I'm gonna fight. I gotta fight. I gotta at least know that I tried. That didn't work. Okay, maybe I can try this. I wanna try everything and I always want my kids to know. Like I even feel like writing them letters and just sealing them. Because I had a really weird feeling the other day that I should write a letter in case something happened to me and let my kids know that I fought for them and how much I love them and how much I care for them. I don't know if that's like something that happens before you die or not, not God forbid. But I just really felt like if something happened because this is going so crazy, I always want them to know that I fought for them, I love them, and I care for them, I want them, that I'm sorry. Kids don't go through this and and, and tell them what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be like. All I gotta do is keep pushing, keep moving. And before I know it, they badass and being here jumping on my bed, messing up everything in my house. And I will be at peace and forever don't want to feel this feeling no more. And in order to do that, never pick up a drink. Never be selfish enough to pick up a drink. It starts with me being selfish. Because I know what that drink going to do to me. I know what a pill going to do to me. So I praise God. Then I call my sponsor. <laughs> she says, you're going to be a sloppy ass drunk. <laughs> I laughed. We was laughing away. She said, as soon as you forget what you used to be like, you would drink again. So we talked about some stories I shared with her and, you know, how the, she's almost got 25 years clean and sober. And she had a using gym the other day. This disease don't never go nowhere. That's why I said, ever continue fighting battle. I enjoy it. And I, I just tired, you know. Just tired. It's how my house being quiet. Kind of tired, tired of the kids coming over that that are not them that are still my you know it's it's just really weird it's just everybody else getting to see this blessing that God made and I just can't wait till my kids to see it so they can begin to heal because once they see that mommy's better everything that they were going through and going through right now will, will ease it will get better when they see mom so I just wanted to share that with y'all and then my family. See, we have a very close family. It's a lot of us. I'm the oldest of five. And we always had our family. Family could get on your nerves, but they are very important. It feels good to be a part of such a big, loving, close family. And when they be feuding a little bit, 
it bothers me because a lot of things people fueled about can be unfueled. And I just pray that everybody gets it together. Everybody finds a peace. Come to terms with their feelings. Deal with them without, without a hurtful way. Without a vengeful way. Or just not in a sad way. In a healthy way. You know, I don't want nobody hurt. I don't want nobody feeling bad. I don't want nobody to go through that. Because I found such a peace and being sober, and they say everybody need them 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Because <laughs> if you're not alcoholic or not, it'll still help you, it'll still work for you. It's a spiritual awakening. And my brain is going, y'all, I'm getting tired, it's getting late. I just wanted to come tell you guys that I'm still here, I'm still clean and sober, by the grace of God and my loving mom, my caring mom, my mom who wants to see me make it my mom who's so proud of me and so happy and hear her voice back in the day to now we get along so good when she called my phone I ain't gotta be scared because I was out last night and she'd have found out real quick I don't gotta be scared that she's gonna say I'm disappointed you need to change your life you're getting older when we talk now it's a smile on her face and I cannot wait to see her so I can uh, she could see me smiling at her and we talk about clothes and makeup. I go over and eat up her food. <laughs> Just to sit in her presence. Feels so good and so different. Now, I ain't running from my mama no more. My daddy always got this look in his eyes and that's another thing. I don't want to lose that. That's amazing. And they gave me that trust and that, that you know, that quick eight months. And, and they're not, they're not worried about me. But they worried about me. If you can understand what I'm saying. So I felt good. My mom, man, I gave my mom a nervous breakdown. Yeah, she still loved me, still care, always been there for me, fighting my battles, fighting for me, praying for me, cussing me out, hugging me, give me things that, that I need to, you know, provide for my family. She's always helping. She'll say, like, now get out, don't come back. <laughs> and if she, you need anything, you okay? That's a sweet lady. She would really help anybody. She done took in people's kids after her kids was big and grown. It take a special kind of person to do something like that. And that's why she got so much love and respect. My mom's a great woman. I love her. I love my dad. Oh, my God, don't get me started on that, man. Such a blessing to have a dad. To have parents my whole life. That's why my kids deserve to have parents. Feels good to be a family. I said, just sit down quiet in here. I'm used to a big family. I grew up with one. But yeah, so don't worry, guys. I'm strong. It takes a strong person to call and tell on their disease and tell them what they wanted to do. I wanted what I wanted when I wanted it. It takes growth to say it's not about you. It's not about what you want. What you want gonna hurt you with everybody else under you or over you. It wasn't about me. I felt good that I was able to call my mom, but I still got to check myself because why did I want that pill? I want it to disappear in my brain. That's the honest to God truth. It's out of the pressure. But I can't gamble with my life because God gave me a second chance. I was dead on the concrete. I dare my ass thinking about taking something that could take me back out there. But I'm proud of myself. I am, because it wouldn't have been nothing to pop that pill a little while ago, like, mm, oh well, but I'm growing, I'm different, I'm not selfish anymore, people matter to me, and I can prove and show that they matter to me by my actions, so I'm very proud of myself for telling all my disease, it couldn't manifest, the pills are not here, I went to the store, and I bought me an outfit. My, I said, that's still seeking an outside source to make me feel something. My sponsor said, at least it ain't that. Because <laughs> we can have a a, a, um, a shopping addiction, eating addiction. And addiction is addiction. Anything make you feel good and you like the way it make you feel, you want more of it. <laughs> so, But I'm not going to do that because I have a family and I have to put money to the side. And, um, <laughs> nah, I only bought a little shirt for like $3 and I bought a pair of pants for like 6 Ain't got nowhere to wear it to. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys, I thank you guys for listening. 
if you're new here, subscribe. If you want to know more about what's going on with my family and my situation, just go back and watch my videos. And if there's anything you want to ask me or anything you want to share with me or any problems that you may go, be going through, I would really try my hardest and my best to help you guys through it. I've been through a lot. I put myself through a lot. And I pretty much can touch on pretty much anything. But I will say this. God loves me. He wants me. And the devil knows that. So every time I get tempted like that, I just know that I have a God who's in love with me and got plans for me. And I'm there and I'm close and the devil don't want me to get it. So that just let me know that God is here. He is real and he loves me. He gave me that strength and that power and that wisdom, that peace and that joy. And I'm still happy because I'm not dead. I'm still clean and sober, living in sobriety. My church is opening soon. The meetings will open back up soon. And I can get back into the swing of things. And I'll be even stronger so I can help the next girl tell her it will be okay. Don't pick up. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. You lost your kids? You can get your kids back, but you can't get them back drunk. You can't get them back with that stinking thinking. You lost your job? Forget a job for now. Focus on yourself. Because if you don't focus on yourself, then that job ain't gonna mean nothing anyway. Because you're gonna lose it or you're gonna spend all your money on something stupid. Maybe be a dude, gambling, clothes, alcohol, drugs, food. We all can turn our lives around, but it starts with us. You have to want to do it. You have to want. Then you have to surrender your old life. And remember what that life got you, how you felt, what you went through, how people looked at you, how you messed up precious times I could have had with my kids that I missed out on and they were home and I was here in the streets or if I was at home I was drunk thinking I'm doing something being a mom I wasn't doing shit but I'm better feels good talking to y'all it really does feel good I think I'm gonna start journaling again though and I um, started I was in the morning I was so the first thing I would think about is my kids and I had to refocus my thought back to God in the morning and meditate, listen to my Christian music, pray and worship and read my daily bread and read my 24-hour book, which tells you how an alcohol is in a day or things to think about throughout the day to make your day positive and, you know, have things in order, something to think about other than crazy stuff. So not that I want to think about my kids, but I had to regroup my thoughts because when I do that I hear something from God that gives me strength courage and hope I hear something that somebody else is going through or similar to what I'm going through and I say damn I ain't the only one and I don't like the way somebody else is going through it but I'm not the only one and they got through it or they're getting through it and that gives me strength alright guys so my heart's heavy. I need to get a lawyer. I must start me a go go for me page so I can get a lawyer to get my kids back home because I'm broke. <laughs> or get on some kind of talk show. Cause I really think my case is being neglected. <laughs> and not because things are going my way or I got a social worker. It's because things are really just not going the way they're supposed to. My kids should have been home, truth be told. But I get they want to make sure there's no more arguing and fighting here. I get it. But damn, a whole year? And what y'all asked of us was done a long time ago. So you want to see us practice that and make sure that's happening. Well, it's been nine, eight, nine months. <laughs> They just hold on to our kids and hold on to our kids. Like they waiting for some shit to happen, but it's not. My God, it's good. I told my husband what I was feeling. <laughs> he just kissed me on my forehead and said, I'm proud of you. 
All right, guys, like I said, said for me, it's getting late, as you can tell. I need to pray. It was just my meeting. I went for a walk with my granddaughter, but I just can't stop thinking. Can't stop feeling. That'll be the worst thing I do. All right, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye.